Hello, lovely people. There we go. We are live. I'm going to go ahead and share this out, and I'm going to go live on Instagram, too, while I'm at it, and then we're going to go ahead and get started. Okay, so Instagram, we're good. Hey, Instagram. Hey, Facebook. Hello, my lovely people. I'm going to go ahead and share this out, so hang tight, and then we'll go ahead and get started, okay? I'm talking about what you see is what you do. These are family and environmental factors that have kept you stuck since childhood because this is what you saw, so this is what you now do, and this is how you operate through life. We've got to change the cycle. So let me share this. Share to a page. are live now join us okay so let's see if I can do this right because I'll be messing this stuff up all the time and I'm gonna share it to my group Hello, loves, if you're here with me, say hi, and where you're from. Hey, now, if you're here with me, come say hi and tell me where you're from. We'll get started in just a sec. I'm going to go ahead and share this out. If you're here with me, go ahead and share this out. I'm on a mission for millions, waging war against the spirit of fear. So I want to be able to get these, these messages that I'm bringing to you into the hands of every woman that I know who struggles with fear and feelings of unworthiness. We are live now. Join us. Okay. Okay, I think we're good. So I just wanted to um, talk about these environmental factors and these family factors that have really kept us stuck uh, since childhood. And I have a couple of examples that I actually really wanted to use. And how it's really keeping us stuck in our forward momentum in business and in life, um, even in relationships. How about I put you over here? Okay. <laughs> so here's the deal, is that we are products of our environment. This is true. You know, we all know that, that we're products of our environment. And so that's where I get the, you know, what you see is what you do. And so there are certain habits that we tend to pick up or that we picked up from childhood, you know, from our parents, uh, from if, you know, a lot of people I know have been in foster care, from the foster care system. If you were adopted, no matter where you've grown up. Even if you've grown up homeless, I know a lot of women and men who have grown up homeless and there's habits that they have adopted now that have transcended time. And it's because they got a glimpse of it growing up. So a couple of things I just wanted to talk about today. I usually don't preface these videos, but I am going to preface it today. I don't anticipate this being a long video. So, for those of you who don't know who I am, I'm Candace Gray, the Courage Coach. I help women of faith and entrepreneurs conquer fear and feelings of unworthiness so that they can walk confident and courageous in their purpose, boldly and authentically doing what God called them to do, fearlessly and free. So, here's the deal, is these habits that we've grown up with have acted, they act as like self-sabotaging behaviors, essentially. So a couple of them I wanted to talk about were, and I promise you, I'm about to hit home for so many people, so many people, drinking, cursing, smoking, overeating. And trust and believe, when I say I'm about to hit home for so many people, I'm included in that list. I'm included in that list. You know, there's things that we have seen growing up that have transcended time, and now we're dibbling and dabbling. If not dibbling and dabbling, we're like full-fledged in these habits. And they've become essentially sabotaging to our success. You know, the environments that we've grown up in, you know, if you've grown up in an environment where smoking and drinking was just what they do, 
eight times out of ten, you grow up not only being comfortable with it because this is what you've grown up with, but you engage in it as well. It just becomes a part of your culture. And it's not that anything is wrong with it, but what happens is when you start engaging in these habits on a regular basis and you find yourself not being able to move forward in what God is calling you to do because you spend so much time, energy, and money to support these habits, then we have a problem. We have a problem. You can't focus on building your business because you're spending $50 a week on alcohol or cigarettes. I don't know how much this stuff costs. But I'm just saying, when we consider where our money and our time and our energy is going, it is going to things that are less productive than what we're being called to. If we're being called to start a ministry, if we're being called to start a business, we've got to get in alignment with what God is calling us to do and recognize these self-sabotaging behaviors. And now, like I said, a lot of times we don't realize that they're sabotaging because it's, it's what we've grown up with. This is just what we know. This is what our family engaged in. This is just what we do. And I want you to understand, you know, was it, what's today? Wednesday? Monday? I don't even know what today is, y'all. <laughs> it's Wednesday. Was it Monday I did a video talking about generational curses and how we are predisposed to certain illnesses and behaviors that come from generation to generation. So one of the things is that, yes, we may automatically be predisposed to it. However, if we grew up in an environment where it's not something that we saw on a regular basis, many times we won't tend to engage in it. So, for instance, if you know that your great-grandmother smoked cigarettes, your grandmother smoked cigarettes, but your mom didn't smoke, and you grew up in the house with your mom, more times than not, you'll tend to not smoke because that's not something that you grew up with. However, if the great-grandma, the grandma, the mom smoked, nine times out of ten, you're going to smoke too. We're predisposed to these. Not only are we predisposed to it, but because we are a product of our environment, we tend to engage in the things that we see the most. And so this goes for not only just drinking and, and smoking, but, you know, if we're talking about cursing, there's a lot of families who communicate and they curse at each other. And it's not that it's a bad thing. And that's what I want people to understand. It's not that it's a bad thing. This is just the language that you use inside of your family context. Now, if you're trying to start a ministry and or a business, you're so used to using these particular words, you've got to get a rein on that. Unless you're using, you know, in business, I know a lot of entrepreneurs who actually they curse in their business. And it's for them, it's about being authentic. And there's no problem with them. But if there's a problem for you with your language, with your mouth, then you're going to have to get that together if you want to move forward in ministry, if you want to move forward in business, and you don't want that language to be a part of it. So, as I said, these are environmental factors that we're exposed to that just become the norm to us. But we've got to understand when something that has been the norm for so long then shifts into being a sabotaging behavior. I don't care about President Trump. If y'all don't quit sending me these things, sorry. <laughs> um, another one is, is overeating. And that's something that I struggle with because that's something I've dealt with all my life and I've seen it in my household. So if it's becoming a sabotaging behavior for you, if it's affecting the way that you're presenting yourself, these are things that we've got to get a hold on and we've got to recognize when we're partaking in habits that have been the norm for us, but now it's no longer serving a purpose, okay? It's been the norm, but now it's no longer serving a purpose. So it's important to understand what habits have you seen growing up, you know, in your family, um, in your environment that you still do to this day or that has become your norm. You've got to recognize them. Now, another thing that I want to address, and I'm going to actually preface this one because this one many times can be uh, personality traits. And I have to understand that. We all have to understand that this next one that I'm going to talk to you about can be personality traits. It can be managed, yes. It can be organized, yes. But it can be also considered a personality trait um, set aside from it being an environmental factor and something that you're just used to. It is cleanliness and clutter. Oh, my gosh. <sighs> I know I'm stepping on some toes here, y'all. 
how many of you have seen someone who they're just very, very unorganized, very disorganized. Um, their homes are very cluttered and, and they're just messy. They're just messy. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. They're just messy. A lot of us have grown up in environments that are messy. We've grown up in messy environments, very unorganized, uh, no structure. It's stuff all over the house. Um, and it's just very, very unclean. So here's the thing is that with this, you can go one of two ways. You know, there's many people who've grown up in households like that where it has become the norm. And this is what you just pick up. You weren't encouraged to clean up. You weren't encouraged to organize anything. This is just how you grew up. So this is how you continue to uh, maneuver through your adult life. Now, some people will do the total opposite. Whereas if they grew up in, you know, a cluttered, filled, messy house that was very, very disorganized, what they tend to do is they tend to go the total opposite. Like, I grew up in a messy house. I don't want to be nasty like that. They don't want to be nasty. So they become neat freaks. So this is another thing. Hey, Kev. This is another thing that we've got to understand. We're a product of our environment. If I've grown up in an unclean environment, in a messy, disorganized environment, many times that's going to transcend time, and we're going to find ourselves being messy, unclean, and disorganized as an adult. Now, you tell me how that's going to affect your future movement, your future success. If you're messy and unclean and disorganized, how are you going to get anything done? How are you going to be productive in business? How are you going to be productive in your ministry if you can't even get your house organized? These are things that we've got to understand, that we are a product of our environment. And like I'm saying, it's not about judgment. It's not about saying you're wrong or that, you know, you're bad or you should do it differently. But it, it is it's something that has been the norm for you growing up and you realize now that is no longer serving you a purpose, you've got to shift. You've got to flip the script and you've got to do the very thing that's opposite of what you've grown up knowing. So it's, it's up to you to, to evaluate, what am I used to seeing in my family growing up? Were we drinking? Were we cussing? Were we smoking? Were we unclean? Were we messy? Were we overeating? These are things that on an everyday basis we're just used to. And sometimes ain't nobody ever told us that it's an issue until we're trying to start a business or we're trying to start a ministry or we're trying to change our lives. And we're like, dang, this keeps coming up for me. Why can't I quit this habit? It's time to open your eyes and recognize. It's time to shift the trajectory. I can never say that word. The trajectory of your life and of your family's life. If these are habits that you're looking forward to, to getting rid of, you got to start today and you got to acknowledge the fact that this is a problem now. I'm not going to be able to be successful if I keep these habits going. They're acting as self-sabotaging habits. So in this moment, if you're here with me, ask yourself, what have I grown up with? What have I seen that was really the norm for me? And no one's ever told me that it was bad, that it was wrong, but this is just now what I do. And now I'm noticing that it's kind of becoming a problem. I want you to ask yourself that question. It doesn't have to be anything that I listed, but think about how you were raised. And, and, and there's a lot of people who didn't have stable families and they went from house to house to house or maybe they were homeless. So now, because they were on the street a lot, they didn't get you know, certain skills growing up and now it's transcended into their adult life. Now they're finding it difficult to start a business, to be organized, to uh, stay on task. To be clean because they didn't have those skills growing up. At what point do we recognize that our behaviors are not serving a purpose for us and that we're keeping ourselves stuck? Sometimes we don't even understand that. And it's been keeping you stuck since you were a kid. And it's never been a problem for you until you decide to grow. If you don't want to decide to grow or if you just the same old, same old every year, how you doing? Oh, I'm the same. I'm the same. Same old, same old. If that is your answer, we got problems. Same old, same old. You doing the same things you was last year and the year before and the year before. At what point do we grow? At what point do we recognize the things that have been holding us hostage from walking in the purpose and the destiny that God is calling us to? It's your turn and it's your time. I think I'm about to get ready to end this live video in a minute because we got people coming through. But I wanted to just come on shortly today and just talk to you about that. Understand the environment that you grew up in and the habits that you grew up with that may no longer be serving a purpose for you. 
And so if you're feeling like, okay, I got some things that I need to work through and I'm really ready to take that stance and you're really ready to, to change your habits and become more productive, um, become more clean, become more organized, get rid of these self-sabotaging behaviors. I want you to inbox me if you're ready to move forward for the Queen's Courage Camp. This is a six-month mastermind that I'm doing under the Confidently Courageous program. Over the course of six months, number one, we're going to get your vision together, what it is that you want in life and in business, where it is that you see God taking you. We want to write the vision and make it plain. Get clear on who it is you want to become. Who is she? Who is she? And then we're going to go into, uh, we're going to go into discovering the root of the fear and unworthiness. This is where we're digging deep. Where are these fears coming from? Where is these feelings of unworthiness coming from? We're digging deep. And then we're going to go into learning how to reframe your life more positively, understanding that everything you've gone through, everything you've been through, no matter how heinous, no matter how traumatic or tragic, has purpose in it. How can we reframe these situations to understand that and so that we can accept our lesson and our gift in it? And then we're talking about courage and action. We're putting our courage into action, and we have challenges, heart-provoking, thought-provoking, action-provoking challenges. So really put this courage into action and do the very scary things that you've always kind of strayed away from. And then lastly, we're talking about consistency and accountability. You can't give up because it gets hard. Life gets hard. That's what happens. You've got to stick in there. You've got to be consistent. You've got to connect to other people that you trust, someone that you look up to to say, hey, how can we link up and support each other? How can we do this together? And then lastly, we have a five-day international retreat in the Dominican Republic, which I'm super excited about because this is about where we're really putting our courage into action in a more experiential context, okay? So if you're ready to meet me in the Dominican Republic for this six-month mastermind, I want you to inbox me, okay? I'm going to get ready to end the live stream because someone's at the door. I'll see you guys later. Love you. Bye.